Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course, and in this module we'll be looking at the Ring Chart by MAQ Software. The Ring Chart by MAQ Software is very similar to the Donut Chart, so if you've used the Donut Chart with inside of the Power BI desktop that's already available to you, it has a very similar look and feel to that Donut Chart, but the big difference is there are a lot of customizations you can do to the Ring Chart. So you can have multiple series that you want to look at, you can actually see the legend is quite different and the screenshot on the right hand side. And the, and the basic idea of the donut chart still applies here, though. The size of each slice is representative or relative to the data that you provide to it. So it's kind of got the same idea of the donut chart, but there's a lot more customizations. There's a lot more data labels that you can adjust and modify. And there's some animation that you can turn on or turn off that's built into this visual. And really, the best way to understand it is just to get into it. So again, this one is developed by MAQ Software. Let's go ahead and jump into looking at the ring chart by MAQ Software. All right, so in this example, again, we're looking at the ring chart, but we're going to start by pulling in some data that is food sales. So I have some food sales data that we're going to look at here. I'm going to go up to the Get Data section, pull in this data from an Excel spreadsheet or workbook called Food Sales, open that. And then within inside of that, there's a spreadsheet called Sales Data. We'll go ahead and accept that and hit Load to bring this into Power BI. So I'll load this into our Power BI data model. And then we'll next bring in the ring chart by MAQ Software. Now you can do that either by going over to the visualization side, over on the right-hand side, and tell it you want to import a custom visual from either a file or the marketplace. In our case, we're going to go ahead and select from marketplace up on the top ribbon here. And once we select it, we'll search for the ring chart here. You'll see there are multiple charts here that are from MAQ Software that are very similar to each other. There's a circular gauge as well as the ring chart that are very similar. In this case, however, they were focused on the ring chart. So let's go ahead and select the ring chart and hit Add. Once we add the ring chart visual, you can see it show up in our visualization pane on the right-hand side. We're going to go ahead and select that and bring that into our report. So I'll go ahead and choose that here and make it take up you know, a good chunk of the design surface for this example. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to drop in some fields into the field list, the field well that we have inside of this visual. And so we're going to start by bringing in, and let's say we want to look at something like the type of food under the legend. And the primary measure that we want to focus in on will be something like the amount. So I'll bring in the amount as the primary measure. And then I want to see something like the quantity as the secondary measure. So you can actually have two separate values shown on a single ring chart. There is only one that's going to show on the ring itself. That's the primary measure. Uh, if you want the ring itself, the, the, the size of each slice to be representative of something else, and you need to change that to the primary measure. You will see the secondary measure throughout. So you can see the secondary measure showing up on the tooltip. You can see the secondary measure showing up in the middle data label. You can also see the secondary measure showing up in the legend on the top. You can also adjust a primary and secondary threshold based on your data set. Now, the idea behind this is you can almost use this as like a KPI where you can have an up or down arrow showing you whether or not you've met a goal. And that goal can either be representative in your data, so you could actually have a column in your data set that represents that goal that you're trying to reach, or you can manually adjust that threshold with inside of the properties. And we're going to do that. We'll see that here in a few moments that you can adjust that in the properties itself. You can also bring in additional fields into the tooltip. So right now you can see our tooltip has amount and quantity. If I wanted to, I could bring in the price as well. And you can drop that in here, and you can see what that value returns back. Okay, that's up to you. I'm going to take, actually leave price off of this for this scenario. It's not really needed. But just so you know, you can bring in additional columns into the tooltip. All right, so then the next thing that we're going to look at is the format settings. So we'll go up to the format section of the visual. And we'll start by going in the legend, and we'll work our way down through the majority of these properties. There's quite a few here to play around with. First, underneath the legend section, we're going to talk a little bit about the fact that you can change the position of the legend itself. So right now, it's in the top position, but you can choose to move it to the right. You could choose to put it on the bottom if you wanted to. I think for our scenario, I'm going to leave it on the top, but I'm going to move it to the top center. So we'll have our legend show up in the top center here. The other thing I'd like to do with the legend is I want to change the primary measure to show as a value. So you'll see down here in the bottom, there's a primary measure section. Primary measure, remember, is in our case, is the amount. And you'll notice that the primary measure is actually not showing inside the legend at all right now. And so what we're going to say is we want to actually see the primary measure shown in our legend. And you can do that by clicking on value. And you'll see the amount now shows up in the legend. You could also make it show the percentage of value. So that's the percentage of the chart that is taken up. Or you can have it show both the value and the percentage. And you can see it's not really separated by anything but more than a space. 
It has ten k ten thousand dollars for bulls, and forty percent of our revenue comes in from that. Now, in my case, I'm going to leave it as just to return back the value, and I am going to also bump up the text size so it's a little easier to see. It's kind of tiny here, so we're going to bump this up to at least eleven points so it's a little easier to read here. And I'll make it a little wider. There we go. All right, so that's it for the legend. The legend's pretty simple. You can note that there are a few other things in the legend. For example, if you wanted to, you could change the uh, let me go over here to the legend. You can change things like the display units if you wanted it to display differently. Right now, it's showing uh, 10K, 2K, 2K. I don't really care for that. So I might change the display units to show none so it actually brings back the full value. It's a little easier to read in this, in this scenario. And you can do some things where you adjust the formatting with inside of the Power BI data model itself. So for example, you can see quantity here is showing without a comma separator, even though the amount does. If I want to fix that, I can go to the quantity and then go up to the modeling section here and tell it that I want to change the format of the modeling to include a comma. You can do that just by clicking on the comma here if you wanted to. There you go. So there's a few things you can kind of adjust and tweak inside of the legend section. Again, it all has to do with what the, the way that the data appears inside the legend itself. You can change the color if you wanted to. I'm not really interested in doing that, but just note you can change the color if you wanted to. I'm going to actually revert that back to the defaults. All right, now on to the next section, underneath data colors. I'm not going to particularly change any colors here, but the only thing I want to point out is the fact that, hey, you can change the colors. So if I wanted to change the color for crispy tacos, which for some reason is this very similar gray to the black that I have, I could switch it to a different color here if I wanted to to make it stand out a little bit. So you can do that. You can come in and modify those colors to however you see fit. Next, underneath the detail labels section, if we go under the detail labels, you can see there's a few things that we can adjust here. Now, the detail labels have to do with the labels that you see across and around the donut chart itself. So if I want, or the, 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 in this case, ring chart it's called. If I wanted to, I probably want to go ahead and change it so it's not using this gray color. Maybe I'll make it a more pure black so it's a little easier to read. I'll also bump up the text size some so we can read it a little better. So I'll bump that up to, let's say, 11 point font here. And then I can go around and if I wanted to, I can actually adjust how the labels themselves show. So the label style right now is set to show as a category, but I could also make it show just the data values. So I can see the value shown there. I can show it as a percent of total so I can see the percentages that are represented. And then you can also do a combination of things. Maybe I want to see the category or the description and a percent of total. That's a good way to be able to see this data and see it in a different way that we're not already seeing it up in the top legend. So in the top legend, I'm not seeing any percentages, so I can show the percentages here. Very similar to how you would do in the native donut chart. The native donut chart has the ability to do that same kind of labeling. All right, let's move down. So moving down a little bit further, you'll see the summary label underneath the summary label section. We'll do the same thing we did before. We'll go ahead and change the color to more of a pure black. And the summary label has to do with this uh, middle section now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this more of a pure black. And you'll notice it only affects the top one. We can actually change and modify the bottom label and in a separate property. So you can control those a little bit more detailed if you wanted to, where you can have them appear in different ways. But for the summary label, I'm going to go ahead and bump the font up quite a bit here as well. We'll make this something like 16 point font. And then you could also change things if you wanted to. Right now, the, the name of this is called total. You could call this uh, sales amount or whatever you want to call it. You can adjust here in the section in the middle. That's the summary label. You can also adjust things like the display units. Again, if you don't like the fact that it says 25K and you want to see the actual amount, you can come in and you can tell it that you want to apply no formatting to it, and then it'll just pick up the formatting from your data model. All right, now working our way down a little bit more, you'll see the secondary summary label options. That has to do with the number right below it. So in the secondary summary label options, you may want to also put it as a black or maybe a more uh, color that stands out so you can separate the two if you wanted to. In this case, I don't necessarily want to separate the two values as far as how they appear. So I'm going to set the formatting options here to be the exact same formatting options that we had in our first example. But you can have a lot of creativity here and actually highlight these in different ways if you wanted to. Maybe you want one to be in red and one to be in black or blue or something like that, you can adjust that. Under the donut title section here, if we go under that, you can actually modify the title that's shown in the top right. So if I wanted to, I could change the title text to something completely different from what it's showing as right now. So maybe I want to make this something like sales totals, and then I can bump up the text size to something like 23 point font, 24 point font, something that stands out a little bit more so you can see the title of the chart being adjusted. And then you can also modify, there is a tooltip title here as well. The tooltip text is something you'll see where this question mark is. This question mark is not something you can get, a rid, get rid of. What actually happens with that question mark is whenever someone hovers above it, they will see a tooltip appear. And this is basically something you'll put in to describe what the users are going to see on this chart. 
So it gives the users a little bit of hint of, of what the chart's supposed to be showing. And so what I can do in the tooltip text is I can modify it to say something like monitor total food sales. And that way you can put something more descriptive if, uh, even than that if you'd like. But next time you have someone hovers above that question mark, it's going to give them information about what they're seeing on the chart. Okay, so you can be really descriptive there if you wanted to. If you wanted to give them any more, any more details, like how the calculations are being designed, you can use that little tooltip property to do that. All right, so next we're going to move back over to the format properties here. So let's go over and we're going to look at the primary indicator options for this one. So you'll see right now the primary indicator options are turned off. We're going to go ahead and turn these on and show you what this does. What this does is it'll actually kick on on the primary measure that you're looking at. You can see both in the legend and in the summary options and summary labels in the middle, you have these indicators that are now showing. And what these indicators allow you to do is almost have a little bit of a KPI within your ring chart. And so uh, you could have potentially brought this in into the field list. You can see there's primary and secondary thresholds that you can provide here, but you can also manually adjust those thresholds inside the primary indicator section here. So if I wanted to, I could say that I wanted the primary threshold for the individual numbers we see up in the legend to be something like 2,000. So anything above 2,000 will light up in green with an up arrow, and anything below 2,000 will light up in red with a down arrow. And you can see that kind of take effect here up in the top section. Now to modify the middle area, that's actually the total value that you see here. And so for the total value, I can set something like 1,200, or 12,000 I should say, and if I set set that to 12,000, you can see it'll kind of adjust the whether or not you met your goal. So in this case, we clearly were well above 12,000. But if I were to adjust that to something like 30,000, you'll see that'll light up in red then. Okay, so you can manually adjust that or you can have it all based and bound by your data that you have. That's up to you how you want to do that. All right, moving a little bit further down, you can see there's secondary indicator options here as well. We're going to go ahead and turn that on as well. Under the secondary label options, we can change the thresholds the same way we did a moment ago. So we can make this, maybe this one's going to be 1,000 units because this is all based on quantity here. And maybe I have 6,000 as my total. And you can see it adjusts our values based on that. And so you can see both in the legend and in the summary labels in the middle, those are changed and modified. And of course, you can change the colors colors that are used uh, for these by looking up at the where it says up arrow color and down arrow color. You can modify what colors are being used for those. That's completely up to you. I'm going to stick with the default red and green here. The next property that we're going to look at here is one here called the animation settings. And what the animation settings allow you to do is if you turn this on, it's really just a kind of an off and on switch. There is nothing below that. But as you do that, you'll notice when you actually interact with the ring chart now that it has this little animation that pops out each section, which was not the interaction you had a few moments ago. If I turn this back off and you hover above a ring, a section of the ring, you can see that it just brings back the tooltip, no little pop out like it has with the animation. So it's just a little nice interaction. So if you turn on that animation set setting, you can actually see now it's a little bit more interactive. And even as you select items here, you can see that it does highlight. This is this is all available no matter what. The main animation part is just how it pops out whenever you're looking at a particular section of the ring chart. All right. The last thing that you can look at here is the no data message. So this is if no data has actually applied within the ring chart itself. You can determine what message is shown. And this can be useful when maybe you have some slicers that are on your reports and based on the selection in those slicers, a lot of the data has been eliminated and no data is visible. You can actually add your own no data message here. So that way it provides some kind of message to the user so they know what's going on with the data. Even though it's been, uh, even though there's no data present, you can give them some kind of message that tells them that. So you can really modify and customize that to be whatever you want. All right, so it's a pretty simple ring chart, but there's a lot of customizations to it. So I say it's simple in what it does and how it displays the data, but there's a lot of things you can do within the chart settings itself to kind of modify it. So a lot of little tweaks there you can adjust and interact with. I hope you guys enjoyed this custom visual, this ring chart, and look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.